one of the most awaited panels of the day, the OTT chess board in India, the next moves. This is a panel on the dilemmas that all global as well as local players in India are up against, the challenges of wooing paid subscriptions, and the rec recurrent run-ins against not permissible content. Add to it the fact that most of the local players have a huge loyalty base because of their broadcast backgrounds or film backgrounds. And add to that a deep insight to the local, into the local palette and a rising small center viewer base and you have a very, very skewed battle waiting to take off. And then of course, we have the Netflixes and the Amazons of the world choosing to go the big budget, big, big names way. Or are they doing that? The panel hopes to explore all these notions and upcoming milestones to jam on the vast range of content that is all out there, made, waiting to be viewed, and waiting to be made. And to take us across this wonderful chess game, we have uh, with us, and I would like to invite you as I announce your names, Ajay Chako, co-founder and CEO RA. If I could ask you to please come up. Rasika Dugal, actor, and right now very watched on Amazon's uh, Mirzapur. Rohan Sippi, filmmaker, producer. Suri Gopalan, the founder of Vista India Digital Media. And taking us through this entire game is Orly Revit, the founder of the Film Collaborative. Over to you, Orly. On. Is it on? Yeah, now it is. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, this, uh, this conversation is enthralling to me, so I, I'm sure it'll be enthralling to you. Let's get started by just going down the line and saying who you are, a little bit about your background, but also what you're doing presently. Hi, my name is Ajay Chaiko. Uh, I am actually uh, a co-founder in one of uh, the country's uh, early uh, original content brands uh, called Array. Uh, we do original content across uh, uh, genres and across formats, uh, across non-fiction and fiction. And uh, we also have our own platform. We distribute across about 22, 23 uh, ODT platforms as well. And um, I've spent almost about two, two and a half decades in print and television and various other media. So I'm part of the furniture of the media business here. So more when we talk. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Rohan Sippi. I'm a di director and producer. I've made films and produced films, and now last couple of years been really fascinated with a, the, a lot of the new formats. So uh, worked on some shows like the adaptation, directed a few episodes of the adaptation of The Office, uh, the American version of that for one of the studios here produced and directed a show for Eros now which came out a couple of months ago and getting into a, another production uh, in this format uh, at the beginning of the new year and uh, yeah the, it's it's uh, it's in the week that William Goldman passed away there's no stronger time to say nobody knows anything so <laughs> I think uh, he was talking about celluloid it's exponentially more true when you <laughs> open it up to this world so yeah, it's, it's, it's a it really interesting time. I mean, Silicon Valley has redefined retail, transport, and we're in the middle of seeing what they're doing to us. So <laughs> we shall see where we end up uh, at the end. What you might do to them. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's me. I am just have to press the button. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brasica. I'm an actor. I've been... Uh, working in films which uh, uh, did not survive in the theaters for more than two weeks maximum. And uh, <laughs> and now, fortunately, I can finally say that they can be watched on some platforms, so I don't have to hang around with the DVD always and say, here's my film, please watch it. And uh, I think it's been um, uh, been doing a lot of uh, stuff on, on uh, OTT platforms for the last one and a half, two years. And, uh, 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 been very gainfully employed thanks to the web space opening up and uh, uh, I, start, I think the first show I did was with uh, the Viral Fever who were one of the first players in the game at that time and uh, uh, which was a very light-hearted show called Humorously Yours and uh, right now a show which I've done for Amazon which is very very dark 
very high doc, as Rohan, Rohan puts it, uh, uh, which is on Amazon and uh, it released on the 16th. Hi, I'm uh, Suri Gopalan. I, I uh, serve as an aggregator for Netflix, uh, Apple, uh, Amazon, amongst others. We also provide a range of uh, localization services for the international majors, um, which includes you know, subtitling, multipurpose dubbing, uh, language QC, etc. Hello, hello, yeah. My name is Suri Gopalan. Uh, my company is uh, a central aggregator for Netflix, uh, Apple, and uh, part of I'm Amazon. Uh, we do a range of uh, uh, QC services, uh, quality control services, uh, including uh, multi-language subtitling, uh, dubbing, uh, and a whole bunch of other services for them. Uh, so that's what I do. And my name is Orly Ravid. I'm the founder of the Film Collaborative. I've been playing this game of chess uh, since about 2004, when VOD was really very new. And I can tell you there were so many platforms then that do not exist now. And uh, I, I know a lot more about the US market than I do the Indian market, so I'm here to learn just as much as you are. Um, oh, I should note one thing, which is the Film Collaborative has something called the Digital Distribution Guide, and it is free and it's on the website, and it has uh, VOD platforms around the world, and you put in, like, whether you've made a horror film or art house or what, you know, you put in what you're looking for, and you'll see the, the platforms that fit your, what you, the content that you've created. It's not, it's in beta stage, it's, it's got improvements needed, but it's, it's there for your free access if you, if you wish to. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research that we discussed while we were chatting, and I, I want to get your, your response to some of the, the data that I've culled, and then to talk about where the market's going. So I read this report that talked about, you know, currently the OTT market's worth about a half a billion dollars, but that it's going to be booming, and it's going to become a $5 billion market in the next, you know, five years or so. Um, there's a prol huge proliferation of platforms, you know, it's going to be from you know, nine to, th like, already we have just have so many different new platforms in this country that AVOD has been the dominant, you know, advertising VOD has been the dominant type of platform, but that it's going to flip and be much more SVOD and transactional in the future. So would you each maybe speak to your experience uh, in terms of where you think India is today and where do you think it's going in terms of platforms and the kind of content available to Indian consumers and audiences? We'll start with you. So, uh, so you, your basic question is whether India is going to turn subscription or uh, well, advertising. Also is, like that, is that your question? Well, the, yeah, okay, so let me narrow the question. Because right now, let's just talk about wh where we are today. Today, how would you describe the landscape in terms of uh, how many viable platforms there are, platforms that people actually watch, and what they are, and what and where do you think will change? See, I think India has been uh, not just in tel uh, not just in digital, but even television and print, a pretty much advertising-led market, right? Whether it's long-form fiction or it's uh, you know other stuff, it's very different from the U.S. market. And uh, I continue to believe that it'll reflect that character somewhat even in the digital era. So if you look at the current market, there's almost, uh, there's a behemoth in the form of YouTube, which is probably the largest, uh, which claims anywhere between 200 to 250 million uh, people. Then there's Hotstar, which is about 100 million. And then there are a lot of others, which again, you know, um, add up to another 100 million or so. And then there is this Netflix and Amazon and, uh, and maybe the homegrown guys like Alt Balaji, who actually add up to a couple of million. I don't want to I know, second guess that figure, but it is, it is, probably less than five, five, seven million, right? So the dominant uh, players in the business are still AWOD or advertising led. And that's because <coughs> India has been always a market which actually uh, was pretty much funded by advertising, uh, even when it comes to television programming, whether, whether it was like the general entertainment channels here, as against the pay TV market in the US, right? So fiction being funded by advertising has been the norm out here. And consumers paying sub $2, $3, even in television for 400 channels, is being the norm, right? So that is not going to change in a hurry. But what has actually changed a lot is the amount of disintermediation that has happened. So a lot of players uh, in, to, in today's market 
uh, and I've been part of three different eras, so I want to actually quote an example, which is quite interesting. When I was in the print side, we used to spend only 25% or 25 cents to a dollar on content. 75 was spent on all kinds of non-content activities, you know, distribution, marketing, circulation, etc. So in the television era, when we actually launched stuff like Colors, etc., as part of Network 18, we thought we could actually reach a figure of almost 50%, right? 50 cents to a dollar was spent on actual content. In the digital era, what what the big difference is, and that's an important difference for everybody sitting in the room, is that almost 75, and for people like us, especially at RA, we've been able to invest 75 cents to a dollar in content. Right? And across genres and across formats, etc. So that's, I think, an encouraging sign. So there's a lot of disintermediation that has happened, which has actually created an opportunity for content getting back to the center, as, a, as also the consumer getting back to the center, because disintermediation means that the consumer gets choice, right? right? So these are the two major themes that are played out, and in the process has led to a lot of original content, part of which Rasika is also part of, right? Uh, uh, getting to see the light of the day and uh, something that was not possible in the television era or in the erstwhile non-digital era. Uh, more on that when we actually hear from others. I have follow-up questions, but let's, I want to hear from everyone first. <laughs> um, oh, no, I was going to go down the list. Oh, sorry. Please. No, he, he, sure, because you, you have a show that's with Amazon, for yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, it's uh, really a relief for uh, uh, actors like me to finally uh, uh, find opportunities uh, to be a part of uh, scripts and shows which are really, really pushing the boundaries in terms of content and breaking formula. I mean, we otherwise we would have had to wait for like three years for one independent film which sort of did that for you. And, uh, uh, and most of us were uh, largely unemployed for that reason. And uh, this is really a very, uh, very, very encouraging for many of us. And also in terms of, uh, uh, I think the series, I don't know whether it's the series format or just, uh, um, uh, uh, just that uh, 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 that new content is being written and finally writing is getting the importance that it needed to have for a really long time. But uh, really a lot of good writing for women characters as well and that has been more than a relief for me. And uh, usually I think the first victim of an edit in a film or a script at the script stage or at the editing stage after the film is made, uh, made is the woman character. And that has uh, been devastating at many levels. And uh, uh, for, uh, in, a, in a series format where you have the opportunity for to build parallel tracks where there are many uh, characters that can be seen through and have a, uh, and can be sort of realized during the series in a, in a beautiful way, I think uh, there, are, there have been several tracks for, for good vi women characters which have been uh, written. So yeah, I think it could be in terms of content, it's uh, really something that has been a very welcome change. Well, so then let me pick up on that actually, and maybe Suri and then Rohan. In terms of, for both the content creator and the audiences, what's the difference now with all the OTT developments of the last years that in terms of content demand and availability from years past? Uh, I think that, you know, rightfully so. Right now, uh, uh, demand exceeds supply, right? Uh, and so, so, so therefore, big investments from all the all the large media players in <coughs> in fresh new content. Uh, however, coming back to the independent film uh, circuit, which is uh, you know smaller budget. Uh, uh, independent films, which have always struggled for distribution in India uh, and around the and, world. And around the world. Uh, I don't necessarily see that uh, changing very much. Uh, I, I was hoping and I thought this would be a dawn of a new era where, where uh, you know, uh, smaller stories in terms of feature length stories uh, could be told and uh, what our uh, our sort of uh, feedback and from whatever limited access we have to from the international guys is that it's all about series and we want the binge, we want episodic consumption to start happening and keeping the viewer engaged for upwards of 10 hours. And that format is relatively new in India. I mean, we really don't have that format in television. So everybody's here trying to figure that game out uh, and uh, so 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 that's where I I I guess a lot of this uh, investments will go 
in episodic content as opposed to feature film content. And Ron, before I go to you, I actually want to see a show of hands. How many people here, I'm assuming most of you are filmmakers, how many of you have either made and are making a narrative feature film by a show of hands? It's very hard to see the hands, but okay, I see a bunch. There we go. Oh, that's a lot of people. And now, how many of you are documentary filmmakers? Okay, fewer people, far fewer. And then how many of you are working on a series? More people. So that gives us a sense of the audience. So Ron, you're a filmmaker. You're, you've been creating work before VOD and, right? Yep. And since. So what would you, what's your advice to filmmakers creating content today in terms of the, the OTT landscape? In your I, I, well, I think even uh, when we look at it worldwide, there's so many uh, challenges uh, for indie films, drama, uh, that, but in a sense what's happened is, is the platforms have become a good home for that kind of storytelling. You can take on those genres, probably get one level deeper like Rasika's done on this recent show. It's hard to see how you could have marketed that the same way when you're competing with the big budget release or a Hollywood film coming out that weekend. But you can to a large extent, and then when I'm sitting here as a director, it's, it's such a nice medium because it's about writing and acting. You know, so, and it's not about necessarily having the marquee face that defines your economics in, in the financing of a film, but it's about uh, guys who are really gonna hold and, uh, you know, like in a feature film, you're okay, you're fighting the edit, you can't hold that shot for two seconds more, but here you've got a wonderful actor, you can let that, like, so there's so many nice things about the medium that, uh, that's, that, yeah, so that's, that's exactly it, you know, so, so, so it, it, and you, there's a level of, uh, you know, you, you're going to do seven, eight pages a day, so you, it's, it's really fun. You get, a, you get a good set of actors, you can really work at a pace and a tempo, and, you know, I've done a couple of shows, there's so much, you know, film, you can maybe start working on a script now, it'll come out two years from now. And in a country like India, it's even crazier, you know, we've got so much change happening all the time, but whereas, I was working on a couple of shows, you shoot next week, you can see the first cut, you can be done. It's also very fun to have a sense of completion, especially when you've come from a feature background which has these really long kind of patterns. So I think one constructive way to look at it is, is to look at a great opportunity to tell drama stories, to tell so many stories, but adapt it for this, uh, uh, for this kind of a, a storytelling format. And, and the rules also keep getting reinvented. It's not that they sit still on it. And, you know, I, I saw a show like Mindhunter a year or so back, and that it's, it's completely taking other kinds of liberties. You know, it's not trying to be a conventional pilot episode with a hook at it. You're just kind of watching, you're wondering what's going on, but you keep watching. You know, another show, like the, for the first time I saw Homecoming, it's a drama that's coming in at 25 minutes. So it's, it's fun also because people are really playing around with things. So there's lots of stuff, you know, McLuhan said the medium is the message. So, you know, I think we have to accept that, that it is an unbelievably powerful way to distribute content that, eclipses so many other things. Uh, and I think the jury is still out on what all we can do and, and where it's gonna go. But uh, it's, it, yeah, there's lots of, lots of really interesting things that you can really engage with that, that was more challenging in, in the pre whatever world of uh, the, the pure theatrical film, you know? Sounds this is going to add to what you're saying. Actually, if you look at the number of hours of original programming in India that has been made, it's not even, last year we did all, barely touched 300 hours, 350 hours. And this year, I'm, I mean, guys like us alone are doing about 100, 140 hours of original programming under commissioning. So I'm assuming that the ecosystem has already gone beyond, like say 10x or whatever. And if you were to compare this with the television uh, era, I mean, one television channel does almost 1500 hours, right? So the, the opportunity is huge. And unlike the television era, I think there's a lot of opportunity for people sitting in this room because in that era, we were actually at the tyranny or the mercy of uh, the Bark or the Nielsen rating system, which s actually hurtled the whole ecosystem towards a lowest common denominator sort of programming. And many people sitting in this room cringed and said, I will never touch television, right? Unlike uh, digital, which actually has been uh, really, you know, just starting off pretty much democratized. Uh, there are lots of non-institutional players that have come in. There are lots of individuals that have come in. I think that opportunity, one should not lose out uh, in, in, the, in the near to medium term. And that's a big opportunity for people who've been working on independent stuff, but I would say that do not like look down upon commission stuff because there's a lot of different kinds of commission stuff that is happening. Let's not only be, you know, kind of, you know, kind of using the word indie in, 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 in its literal sort of way, right? Mm -hmm. 
And can you, you and Suri both speak to, um, it's, it's interesting for me to learn about all the different languages and states and the degree to which localized content, original content can be successful. Can you explain about that? Uh, maybe we'll start with Suri. Uh, well, I, I think Ajay would be actually a, a far better uh, because he's been in broadcast, uh, which covers multi-language uh, things. So India, I think he, he'll be far better at it than me. So India has been pretty much divided, uh, like 800 million television uh, viewers, pretty much 50, 55% Hindi, which is the national language, and about 45 to 50% uh, between the four or five major regional languages, which is uh, Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam, uh, Bengali, and Marathi. Uh, and that structure is pretty much getting reflected uh, even the early uh, adopters in the digital side, which is YouTube, et cetera, right? So YouTube's, uh, almost 50% of YouTube's uh, viewership is coming from uh, regional markets. Uh, a lot of television networks have now got getting revenue as well as audience shares, which is fairly proportionate to this ecosystem, right? So I, I think while a lot of things have changed, the structure of consumption is not changing. People are watching shows, people are watching movies, even on digital. And I believe the language idiom will continue to happen. Though I must say that a lot of original programming in regional, purely from a digital perspective, has not been created yet. There's a lot of UGC stroke, user-generated type stuff that is there. Uh, there's more original programming in Hindi as of now, but some people, uh, one of the people who were on this, who's going to be in the panel, I think Tarun uh, Z, uh, is experimenting a lot with originals in, in, the, uh, in regional digital et cetera as well. But I don't see uh, uh, too much difference in the language idiom uh, or the mix of language uh, in digital as compared to TV. So it will follow. More than 40, 45% will come from regional languages. That's bound to happen. Okay. Um, do you have any, well, first of all, I want to announce something that I can't really say much about, but a friend of mine is consulting for a, pl a platform that's coming in India in the beginning of the new year that's going to be a blockchain-oriented platform oriented to cinephile type films, which they assume is about 10% of the market. I don't know if that's true or not, but just know that that's coming. Um, do you have any predictions in terms of the type of content? And uh, It sounds like you're saying that there's so much that works, but if you had to say, you know, in five or 10 years, these are gonna be the dominant modes of paying for content or accessing content and the dominant categories of content. Do you have any thoughts about that? I think it's, it's going to be tough to kind of try and bracket uh, what kind of content will work, right? So, in fact, we, we've experimented with six or seven genres and the stuff that was told to us in the initial wave of digital that there's a brand of comedy that works in digital and we came up with a sci-fi kind of show and it, it worked. So, I think with digital, one of the things that you can actually easily break is this black and white binary stuff, right? That, oh, this works and this doesn't work, right? So there are topics, or, or rather, I mean, some, the latest conversation is that dark works in digital and light does not work. I, I don't know, I mean, these are all, these, these are not tested notions and these are just like anecdotal stuff. So, I would say that uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, kind of niches in digital that are actually massy enough to kind of have an audience, right? So, for every household in India that has one TV set, there are almost two and a half to three mobile phones. So that itself shows the number of people that are actually you right. know, going to be able to watch. So I, I, I can't make these kind of predictions saying okay, this is the kind of format that will happen. As one thing I can tell you that Indians don't really pay too much for content, right? That I don't right. think will change in a, change in a hurry. Uh, there's no way you'll actually get a 100 million, 200 million pay, people paying $10 a month. Right, it's either the subscription prices will have to come down or it'll continue but to be But what they're doing here yeah. also is they're going through the the telecoms right now, right? So as uh, whatever service, uh, if I'm subscribing to it, I will get access to half a dozen platforms, you know, uh, by virtue of that. I'm not paying any extra for it, but like, you know, so I think yeah, that's so gonna I'm happen now. I, th I believe the Geo Group Geo is going is really yeah. aggressive on the broadband, they've bought cable operators. So that is the bigger Indian consumer is gonna say, okay, I want it all in one. I'll get my broadband, I'll get my content, I'll get my phone calls all right. covered by that one person. That's gonna be the biggest audience and there will be a premium that person that will want the add-ons, but I, I think that's the last mile is gonna really define how the digital uh, uh, whatever content maker reaches. So I, I, it, now it seems the telecom guys and the broadband guys are really gonna have a lot to do with the, the final packages that, that, that consumers yeah, access. No, there's, a, there's a distinct move to disintermediate there also, Rohan. Uh, if you look, the, look at the latest uh, uh, TRAI order, right. it is actually a tariff order for television networks, which 
says that you cannot bundle uh, channels the way you used to bundle earlier on, right? You have to have a maximum retail price for a channel, and the consumer has to choose what channel he needs or he wants, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's cable or whether it's DTH or even in digital, right? So that I think is is a big move that will help again focus back on content and and the unit of content, which is a show or a movie, rather than these artifices that were created or uh, like bouquets or right. channels, etc. Right? Right. People follow the show, not the channel, is what you're saying. Before we turn to questions, I would like to get each of you to say what you think is good advice for the people in this room who you now know what kind of content they're creating, you know, knowing that it's indie content and that their goal, I'm assuming, is to get their content seen, to make some money back, and to get hired on to do more work or to continue to have a sustainable career. So, Suri, do you want to, do you have any yeah, pearls of I, wisdom? I, I, I think, um, I, I, you know, I'm, broadly a big, huge supporter of Indian cinema, right? I don't um, have access to enough of it in India because it's poorly distributed. Um, it's usually word of mouth. But I see the pain of uh, raising money uh, by, it, it takes, you know, you're borrowing money from different types of people and you're rarely able to recoup that investment. So I would, uh, and you use that film obviously as a calling card to get more work. So I am in favor of, and I don't know what, what would you think about this, Rohan, but if, if, if I were you know, uh, a filmmaker today and I could raise, let's say, uh, you know, 50 lakhs or, or maybe even less, I would go out and make a pilot, you know, whether it be a 20-minute pilot or a 45-minute pilot. Because as it is, you guys are making, you know, uh, a 90 minute film or, or, or longer, right? And, and, and the pilot will, will reflect the quality of work. And then you could take it to either an Ajay or a Netflix or an Amazon or a Z5 because for them to develop that same pilot, I realize it takes that much longer. You guys are indie filmmakers, you know, you can go out, express that, you know, idea. Right, the pilot serves as a basis of, of the, of the, the, the and, and it's, and bulk of it, almost all the international guys <coughs> are focusing their efforts on, on, on uh, multi-episodic uh, scripted television. You know, that's where all the money is going to. It's not really going into either acquisition of films, or if it does, <laughs> if it does go into acquisition of films, it's probably the big budget uh, Bollywood commercial films. So, so that's my advice. Yeah, no, I, I think that that is a very interesting and good way to go because, I mean, even from wherever you're investing the money from, you can give them the idea that if you make it work, it's not just 10%, it could be 1% of the entire investment. You could do 10 seasons of this, five seasons. Of this. So there's the, the potential for uh, a sustained kind of creation of things where you can engage actors, crew, and most importantly, the, the platform that would see that I can keep a good chunk of audience engaged if, if uh, we like the pilot. So I think that is one interest. But I, I don't know if you were talking about stuff they've already made or... or, or well, the, I mean, the they do have what they've already made. And so yeah. I'm curious about that too. Just the people here at the market. Where, what platform should they... Hotstar is probably not the platform. No, I think, it, I think it's challenging because, I mean, one of the things I say is also digital in India is a little bit like six blind men and an elephant. You know, you go to meet enough people and they all have completely, and we're just feeling groped in different places, you know, that's... Wow, <laughs> I really got a visual of that. Yeah, so, <laughs> no, but, but the idea is, is, is that the, it is so, and the other thing that very frankly makes it a challenge, and again, what Silicon Valley does, they don't share data, right? After all, talking about being yeah. driven by data, they will drive over you before they'll give you any data, you know? The only so, way <laughs> that you know the data is when you see what they're actually paying for, right? You've, yeah, you can, to that. yeah, yeah, so that's a very indirect, uh, uh, feudal kind of relationship. Yeah. Uh, is it good? No, why? Okay. Well, it was like, uh, like Orange is the New Black was apparently greenlit because Netflix had the data of, of what was yeah. being watched in its service, which was like women in prison. But you know, I'll tell you, but, but as a creative person, it is a creative thing, but there is an inherent satisfaction uh, of the box office and giving you a sense because we're working in show business, you know that, okay, you've invested so much time and money and everything, and okay, this fired really well, that other thing did so much. You lose all that perspective and you're just kind of, in, in much deeper or murkier water without all of that and 
So n no single platform shares, and they don't share it across, and there's no way to compare. So sorry, I was coming back to the bigger thing. It's so hard to know what different people are looking for. Everyone on such uh, an early stage that it's hard for them themselves to judge. But the plus side is you go in some, with something with conviction, and you hopefully can make it really compelling. And and but I, I'll tell you the other thing also is let we shouldn't jump too far ahead because. I know for a fact that a lot of the content that's been watched online is just a lot of people shifting from the inconvenience of television to watching the same content on their phone when they're on the train or when they're on their way home or whatever. So there's, you know, I have friends who write big TV shows and they've said those numbers are online are going up exponentially even as the TRPs drop. So there's that as well. So, so there's so many things kind of moving at the same time. Uh, but I think that the, the big takeout is, yeah, I think it seems that definitely the market is hugely moving towards episodic content. But I think there could be really interesting documentary episodic content that could also be, you know, uh, sold to them, reality kind of stuff. I've already been hearing there's a lot of stuff happening on that. So there's, there's a really wide spectrum of, of places to go. So that's the exciting thing. And I really think regional is, is, is built for digital or the other way around. So. I think there's, if, if people are working in their languages, I think sooner there's rather than later, I think there's going to be great opportunities. Like Ajay said earlier, I think half the production or whatever is going to be outside Hindi, uh, which is, which, and I know Z, for example, is doing a lot of localization. So if they pick a crime show in Marathi, they're not going to replicate that. They'd rather dub it into five languages. So it also gives you access to that audience. Uh, uh, the same footprint, you know. So there's, there's lots of interesting approaches happening right now. And Rasika, before we turn to the questions from the audience, what about women's filmmakers and content by women for women? Do you have any thoughts about the future of that in India? Uh, content made by women filmmakers? Is that what you're uh, I mean, if that's yeah. some, yeah, c by women, for women, all of it. Whatever you, whatever um, thoughts come to your mind. I, I don't know about being made by women because I don't really sort of look at content made by men or women. I, I just hope that, uh, uh, the the content has something for women to do, and then but but you, it, one it thing more I do, often happens one thing when I women do are here in, in these meetings is quite often is this general perception or data, whatever you call it, this skew of it being a more male-driven uh, demographic. Like the online viewer is typically told to me as as a male, so therefore it is a challenge that will have to be taken on, uh, uh, as in people are expecting but, but it to be. But the biggest purveyors of women-oriented programming was uh, Hindi GEC, right? So look right. what look what happened, right? So that's well, not what, necessary. What men thought was what women wanted to watch. I yeah. don't know what it oh, was. Actually, it's rating for women and women. Um, the, it's pretty much the Guju Theatre gang writing <laughs> for women. So what to do? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you did it for so many years that you didn't j share anything else. <laughs> so I'm not sure what really happened there. But I mean, I can just say that uh, uh, that I think that uh, there are a lot of interesting parts being written and uh, sort of uh, uh, women being, uh, I, it seems to me that, you know, now that feminism has sort of become fashionable, uh, a lot of mainstream work also, uh, while they were saying that they were making women-centric films, were kind of uh, in an effort to move away from one kind of stereotype, uh, safely falling into another in which they, uh, uh, the, uh, the women resembled men. And uh, so, so there was a woman playing the hero finally. So uh, that 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 seems to be, I think, sort of changing in in uh, uh, the online content, and uh, that finally women are, uh, I think, in the in the, especially in the parts that I've played, that uh, for instance in Mirzapur, finally uh, uh, acknowledged as sexual beings and not just as people with sexual desires, which is something which is never spoken about, and it's exhausting how much it's spoken about w uh, when it comes to men. So those are the sort of small changes but still I felt even for a show like Mirza there was just not enough screen time for women and I keep telling them them that they should correct that in season two <laughs> so, yeah. well we have five minutes for questions I see one in the front sir yes, yes you the one who oh perfect sorry uh, very good evening to the panel uh, my question is uh, today in terms of web series and content uh, how do big studios like you and all determine the cost of production? And uh, when uh, Secret Games are inside Edge, when it has got big leading films, uh, Starcast only, will it uh, bring down the, when they are on board for web series, will it bring down the cost of production in comparative film or it is the same? Thank you. 
No, I, I, th I think unfortunately one of the trends I'm seeing recently in, as Suri said, there's a little shortage of content. One of the quickest ways to get green light was the old system where you put a star name on it and there's much more likely to get a budget passed and get the show passed. So a little bit the old kind of conventional thinking is kicking back in a new medium, uh, if, if that answers a just little bit. Just to add to what he's saying though, actually you'll see that besides the marquee, uh, you know, kind of the, the marketed shows, if you look at a lot of the uh, digital shows that have actually done the rounds, I wouldn't uh, say they've been like terribly low cost either. Uh, anywhere between 15 to 25 lakhs per episode was the norm when it came to the original, you know, di digital series, right? right? Till last such time, uh, Netflix and Amazon came and said, okay, fine, now let's jack up all the rates for even the guys who are acting in it. So we've, ha we've had uh, season one of our show, like official Shukya Giri, where Sunny Kaushal was there, was about telling Ratsika as well. He was playing uh, a, a lead role. He went, the next show he gets is from Amazon and, and a movie with uh, Akshay, right? So he became a different person altogether. So the same problem that existed in, in you know, television or, or, or even Bollywood is there in, in this place as well, right? So with star cost going up, th there's no other way uh, but to kind of either lump it and do it or you would go and see, look at original stories that are actually not necessarily resting upon star value only, right? Which was the original reason for digital to kind of uh, create these series in the first place. So. Uh, there will be people who will do both. There will be people who will do two and a half, three crores. And like, for example, we ourselves are working with platforms for a show that is actually costing upwards of two, two and a half crores an episode. Whereas we do our own shows uh, in between 15 and 25 lakhs an episode as well, right? So I think there's, there's takers from both. Yes, sir. Hi. Um, Hi, my name is Shiv. I'm a writer director and I'm also a tech entrepreneur. I run a casting co technology company called Castico. Um, I want to bring to your attention this economic theory called the market for lemons, which uh, says that the user who is coming to buy a car doesn't know if the car is good or bad if it's in a used car lot until he buys it. So what I'm worried about with web series especially is because is the key metric for online platforms is time spent on the platform. Um, and that's why we are looking for longer and longer content uh, rather than a feature film which is contained in 90 to 100 minutes. Um, what's happening is that the users don't know before they commit to watching a piece of content whether or not it's good. And that's why the value for content overall is coming down because people will only pay for lemons if they don't think it's good enough. Uh, so I just wonder, as people running technology companies and, and OTT plays, do you consider pay-per-view as a possibility in the future? Or are we going to always have a subscription model where you can just taste 100 films and watch one at the end? But I think because the subscription model is, I mean, not entirely analogous to that because it's a monthly thing, so okay, you have a month worth of lemons, but then you can, you know, switch off, and they're not. Uh, most of the Indian services are not at that super premium price either. So, I, and I think a lot of the challenge right now is to get people to sample it in the first place. So, I don't know if that's. I mean, in an Indian context right now. So the I, I think India is a fairly advertising-driven market. So when you're actually talking about subscription or even pay-per-view, you're still talking about the upper end or the sliver of the market that is actually willing to pay for content right now, right? So I think it, it, it may take a couple of years for even the, in the subscription culture to kind of start. And I'm told with a lot of guys like telcos and uh, the wallets coming together, there could be uh, the t word opportunity that you're talking about, which says that, okay, fine, the, here's a piece of content that I wanna watch and here's, a, here's one buck or two bucks or five bucks. I, from a tech, tech and a wallet perspective, it is possible to do. It's not that it's not possible to do, but I think it's, it's a question of consumer habit and, and orientation in the market. So I don't I, know whether I, that I think I can add some light. You know, we supply about 90% plus of Indian content on iTunes worldwide, right? And we've got enough data because it comes to me and it's pathetic. Uh, it really is abysmal. Uh, and Forget about, I mean, a big blockbuster like Dangal. I mean, I mean that itself, you know, gives us only maybe 10, 12,000 transactions. I mean, Indians worldwide and in India don't like paying boss. Paisa nahi dene internet money, free. Right? I understood that. 
so so that is a, a, a major challenge. But you know, so the big players in this are Google uh, Play, the Play Store, and the iTunes. In the world between them, they control about ninety percent plus of the VOD. Uh, they themselves don't believe in it. You know, Apple's launching its own SWAT service, uh, you know, moving towards it because they find that on a per level transaction, it doesn't work. Now, having said that, right, I still believe that at the end of the day, uh, coming back to what Orly said, is that across this big country of ours, there is a cinephile audience which would be interested in high quality good cinema. Okay, which commercial Bollywood does not really provide. I mean, it's much wider, it's meant for, you know, we, we see few, very few good films as such on our screens. It's getting better now, but <coughs> we still see very few. So I still think there's a play uh, within the wallet ecosystem, okay, for let's say 100 rupees or, or 50 rupees where bulk of that money goes back to you. And if you can create a community, a social sort of campaign, a digital, smartly designed digital campaign, uh, you might be able to actually recover the cost of, you know, at least a, a part of the cost of your production. So I'm hopeful that uh, that that ecosystem will play out. So I'm going to give the last question to this person. Hi, sir. I have a question for you. That I have a made film, uh, made a film with G Studios. And uh, I surprisingly think that we don't have deal breakers for the filmmakers uh, towards these OTT platforms like Netflix, Amazon. Uh, it is not easy for any filmmaker to uh, showcase the film to these platforms. So we don't have good deal breakers here. Suppose I made a film with G Studios and I thought that who will go to Netflix, how, will, how we will reach to, uh, reach to them. We sold off every right to Z Studios and g gave it to them because we don't want, uh, we d don't have anybody uh, to b break a deal between, uh, to bridge the gap. So, what's... You, you, you finish the whole, whole, is it a film or a... Or is it a film? It's a Bollywood film. And did you reach out to us to... to uh, no, I didn't reach out uh, uh, to people because we made some brokers there in Bombay and uh, they have certain uh, uh, things that itna percentage, itna percentage or something. But it is difficult. I think that a lot of filmmakers are there who wants to sell off their content, but they don't have good deal breakers here. So it is no, very difficult I mean, for them. Uh, 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 you know, just a girl from our office is here, Manika. Otherwise, I'll give you my, my email address, which is uh, just, just send info at vistaindia.com. Any film, okay, by default, we send to Netflix. Whether they watch it or not, I don't know, right? They do promise me that they will watch all the films, right? And they will get back with an answer. Yes, no, here's the amount we're gonna give you. Now, don't be terribly optimistic if they, about the whole process because they're increasingly leaning towards big commercial Indian cinema and producing their own original product, you know, even features. So, so, I just yeah. uh, was really itching to ask this question. There are actually two questions. One to Mr. Suri Gopalan. Sure, are we allowed to go over? Because I'm sorry to interrupt you, but... Oh. Last one? Last question, yeah, last and then I have one. a closing thought. Please, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, I made a web series called Love Sutra, yeah. which is just for mobile consumption, four to seven minutes long. Oh, by the way, I'm Pooja Mishra. I'm here from Pune, and I've been running a production house for seven years now. So I gave it to Hangama Play app, and they wouldn't give me any statistics of you know, how many views and all of that. So unfortunately, I had to break off my contract. So you, your company is a content aggregator company which distributes finished products. So I mean, uh, does the production house uh, get an update on how well it's doing and all of that? No, absolutely not. That's what the Rohan was telling you earlier. That, that the platform controls the data. They don't want you to know what's working, what's not. That's their proprietary. So they just give you a down payment and license yeah, it license to themselves? Yeah, license fee and say, hey, be happy, go make your so next So there's show. no monthly uh, uh, return on investment? No, uh, the only way you will see data is if you put it up on YouTube. Okay. And one small question for Mr. Ajay, um, considering you all are creating content for RA, which is a popular uh, app amongst youth. When you all are like about to start a show, like I'm about to start a show, I've made a pilot already, it's already got an award, it's a reality show, uh, where we're giving people an opportunity uh, to be a Bollywood star. So, I mean, how does it work if somebody 
content creator wants to work in collaboration with you? Does one have to mail across the concept and a pilot episode and you take it from there? Or they just mail you a series of finished products? So actually, we've, uh, we worked on uh, stories right from uh, the concept stage, right? So uh, we don't believe in getting to pilot, etc. Uh, before we are actually convinced about the writing itself, right? So our writing, uh, the, the major part of our time investment goes in uh, getting the writing correct. So a lot of people come to us with concepts, but we need to kind of get writers on board, whether it's somebody who's a writer himself also, who thinks that you know they could have actually done a good job, but we actually realize that they need help. So we add on a writing team uh, or a writer to the project, and then we take forward the development piece, right? So writing is where we spend maximum amount of time, and concept, frankly, is just the beginning. Uh, We've, we've invested more, almost 70, 80% of our time over the last two years in getting concepts to a stage where it can actually come into some sort of, you know, kind of screenplay, et cetera, right? So that's a normal process. Right? People can get in touch with us uh, with concepts, but we kind of take that, we work together with them for a long time before it actually sees the light of the day. So I just want to close by noting that one should distinguish between platforms that are curatorial and ones that are not. So for example, Amazon, uh, anyone can put content up on Amazon. Whether anyone sees it after that's happened is a different question. No, I mean Amazon. At least, at least, at least. No, in not in India, actually. Not in India? Okay, not that's in unfortunate. India. But if you send me your film, I'll put it up on Amazon. Um, and and, 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 and I, I guess what I don't, I mean, this and, and iTunes also, if you meet their tech specs and you don't have content that's sort of prohibited, the same is true there. So in other words, there's a distinction between curated platforms and not, but marketing is always a challenge and getting to audiences is a different issue. That's for another panel. Thank you so very much. It's been delightful. Thank, Thank you.